So learning the Python programming language is probably the best decision that I've ever made in my life. Not only did it allow me to escape a career that I absolutely hated in finance and get an equally lucrative job in something that I actually enjoyed. But even besides my career, the more and more I learn about Python and the more and more I program with it, the more I realized how many amazing things I can do with it to literally make my life easier. Like seriously, how many times has your desktop looked like this? But what if I told you that just with one library and a couple of lines of Python code, you can automatically clean it up. In fact, I have a tutorial about just that. The great thing about Python specifically, and the reason why I always recommend that every single beginner choose Python as their first language is because Python allows you to do all of those things in much less time and much more easily than any other programming language. But now real talk, I do need to tell you something. Learning Python or learning any programming language is not easy. So it's gonna take a lot of effort and it's going to take a lot of time. But if you are willing to stick to that, keep watching because if you stick to what I'm about to tell you, you will be able to master Python in 2023. I've broken this video down into four key traits that you will need to possess if you want to have any chance of success. So I'm gonna go over each of these in order. So to explain what the first thing is, I first want to tell you just what got me to learn Python personally. I was basically in a situation where I had just graduated from university. For those of you who don't know, I went to university in University College London, where I did an economics degree. And just like every other economics graduate in the world, I was dead set on going to work in finance, all of these like businessy fields, like these very corporate kind of jobs. But the problem, I really wasn't excited about it. And the more I thought about it, the more I was just dreading starting my career because I just did not feel like I could ever enjoy this path that I was now on. So at some point I started thinking, okay, what is it then? What could I do instead? And long story short, and I go into this more in other videos, I discover coding. And as soon as I start coding, as soon as I start learning it, I realized that this is actually the thing that excites me. Coding actually allows me to solve problems that I actually want to solve. It actually allows me to do things that I'm actually excited about. And a lot of things I learned about the nature of work as a software developer really excited me and really I felt like it had a lot of the things that I felt a career in finance would have been missing. So when I started learning to code, I felt like I had to succeed. Like failing just wasn't an option because failing would mean that I would have to go and work one of those shitty finance jobs, which I knew I was going to hate. So the point of this story is that I had a very strong reason to learn to code. There was a very strong why for me to actually keep going in all of those moments when I didn't feel like I knew what I was doing, when I was doubting whether I could even do this. And for you, the truth is that if you really wanna learn Python, you need to want it badly enough. What is the thing that is going to keep you going when things get tough? Because let me tell you, they will. Okay, so after we know why we're learning Python, we now need to know how to actually do it, right? And let me tell you that most people learn like complete degenerates, honestly. Stop trying to memorize random bits and pieces. Like I got very good grades at school, always. But in the real world, especially when we're trying to apply a complicated skill like Python or coding, it's not possible for you to go and memorize every single method, every single function, what they all do. What you need is the logic and the ability to apply that logic into any given situation situation, that is how you actually learn. First, learn the basics and use them in some problem. And through this process, you naturally learn all the details. Okay, so now we get into the good stuff. To master Python, you need to understand the five core building blocks of Python programming. Number one is variables. So basically your computer is divided into a bunch of these memory blocks. And to save stuff in these memory blocks, we use something called variables. We have six there, we have five there, we have the word cat here. And then in your programs, when you wanna use these, you just call the name of the variable and you get to access the thing that you just saved into the memory blocks. The second thing you need to understand is data types. Just like the word cat and the number six are intuitively like different things. In a similar way, a programming language understands a string of text and a number are different. So in other words, they're different data types. You get a lot of detail in there. You need to understand data types like strings, integers, floats, booleans, lists, dictionaries, and you need to know how to use them and what you can do with them. The next thing you need to understand is program flow. So I might go something like, if like button is smashed, then I will be happy. And if not, I will be sad. And this is what is known as program flow. We have if statements, we have elifs, we have else's. So if something happens, certain lines of code will run. If some other thing happens, maybe there's an error, etc., etc. We're sort of becoming 
masters of controlling the flow of our program to decide which things will run in what cases that kind of stuff now four is loops let's say we have a list which by the way is just another data type and we want to do something to every single member of this list like we want to add two to all of them we don't actually have to write the same line like a million different times we can just write the line once and then run that line of code for every single one of the members of the list by writing something called a loop and lastly we have functions so basically we use functions to encapsulate code so like to take us back to this idea of these memory blocks you might have a bunch of lines of code that you might want to save and like run later and you want to save it so you save all this line of, of code in a bunch of different memory blocks and then you define a name for the function which allows you to then access the lines of code of that function later on whenever you want once you understand all of these core building blocks you pretty much have all of the logic that you need to become a great programmer and to start mastering python but you're not obviously a master yet to become a master what you still need is one more thing so learning programming is hard because it requires you to rewire your brain to sort of think in a different language and i'm not talking about a programming language I'm talking about the language of logic like the thing that most beginners including myself back in the day don't quite understand is that every single programming language is really the same language it's just a language of logic with slightly different syntax so rather than thinking of programming languages as like english and french and chinese they're more just like American English and British English, that kind of thing, sort of different dialects of the same language. Twitter, 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 Twitter. No, 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 it's Twitter. We invented Twitter, dude. So it's Twitter. With all the same logic without all these building blocks that we just discussed. So this right here is an egg. You know what it is. It's this protein filled, delicious thing that you can eat that comes out of a head. But we have many different names for an egg. In English, it's an egg. In French, it's enough. In Finnish, it's Kanan Muna. But no matter what you call it, the idea of what an egg is, is the same thing. It's just, you know, it's this thing. And it's the same thing when you're writing, let's say a for loop in Python or JavaScript or PHP. The idea and the logic is the same. The syntax will simply become automatically like ingrained into your brain when you just code so much that you literally start seeing dreams about doing for loops. You can learn concepts, but unless you put those concepts into practice a lot for many, many hours for a very long period of time, they will not become ingrained in your brain and you're just not going to remember them. So that's why the fourth thing you need, and there is no escaping this, is to get your head down and work. The reason why I like Python so much and why I always recommend it to all beginners, besides the fact that it's one of the most demand languages in the world and it has like the best community and all of that, is because the syntax is very easy and very simple, which allows you as the beginner to, in the beginning stages, simply focus on the logic that matters, not where to place a semicolon or where you need curly braces and all these annoying syntactical details. I'm in Instagram if you want to follow me there. If you want to hear my full story of how I learned to code in just four months and got a job as a software engineer, you can watch this video right here. Take care.